Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sigma Podcasts. And today we have with us Patti Murtazalieva, who is the Vice President of Global Sales and Operations of Samsab. Patti, welcome. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, first and further. Thank you for having me. And uh, let's have the discussion. We already started in Dubai and it's ongoing. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, before we jump into the world of KYC, AML, gaming, crypto and the UAE, because I would like to discuss also the UAE with you, um, tell us something about Patti, um, apart from your addictive smile. <laughs> uh, well, um, about me, you know, I was born in the Alpine mountains and it's very genuine for me that I have... Uh, addiction to hiking and climbing and all outdoor activities, uh, one of my favorite. And here, like, you know, the highest European peak has been submitted and hopefully we are planning with friends to go to Everest and at least to get the base camp. And it's all about the outdoor activities and enjoying nature. Here in Dubai, it's about sailing, about exploring the quite diverse nature for me, because it's not the mountain area, but still mountain activities are inspiring me much. This is about okay. me. It's obviously a bit tough now to do any hiking uh, during this season, because in Dubai, it's quite, uh, quite uh, hot at the moment, right? Uh, yeah, it's very hot and the temperature is just increasing. Nothing. Yeah. I don't envy you. I will envy you in uh, December and January, although I might spend some of my time there um, during the next December and January period. Um, so your hobbies are trekking and hiking, right? So that's, you, do you have any other hobbies that, uh, that you like to do? Uh, it's, you know, daily routine, yoga, stretching, it's uh, reading. I also have some pro bono projects in education fields. Uh, and yeah, it's just Interesting. what the interests I'm combining and contributing my best. Interesting, interesting. So again, before we tackle KYC and AML, I know you're currently living in Dubai. Uh, um, as you know, uh, we at WH Partners have, an open, have opened an office there uh, earlier this year. So apart from the heat, how is life in Dubai? Uh, I moved here almost two years ago and so far I find it's very exciting. It's not only like a safe place to live and work, it's also a melting pot for now because whole region is emerging and you see that new opportunities is coming up and open banking is developing, blockchain, crypto, web three projects are just uh, flying here and uh, multiple businesses coming uh, to Dubai. For me, it's about people coming with ambitious from different backgrounds and cultures to perform, execute, and build those businesses here. And it's amazing to be among those people and feel that vibes and uh, uh, feel that government of the country is fully supporting uh, such approach. Yeah, yeah I find uh, it really, really interesting. And, and actually, there's also going to be gam gambling eventually in Dubai, in, in the UAE, let's call it that way, because Ras Al Qaima is taking the initiative to have the first uh, land-based casino um, in, 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 in the region, basically. There is no other land-based casino in, in the GCC region. Yeah, you're right. It's quite new. It's uh, something that uh, uh, they're exploring here because uh, you understand the diversity of the economy is uh, crucial for this uh, country and for the region. It's been based on oil and gas, then it was a shift to real estate and tourism. Now there is focus on new uh, industries, new technologies, and it's going beyond uh, not only gaming, but it's blockchain projects and uh, startups. It's completely new and uh, I see that authorities and government deeply believing in it and doing all the best from their perspective in terms of regulation, infrastructure, 
uh, finance investment uh, to have that future for their nation and for people on the land. We yeah. met for the first time, I recall, at uh, Sigma in Dubai, actually. So, uh, and it was an amazing event, like really, really busy and uh, um, so many uh, exhibitors and speakers on two different stages. So it was extremely vibrant and there are conferences going on all the time. You, you can't actually go to all the conferences there yeah. because you end up not working. Um, you mentioned something about safety and I'd like to pick on it. Sometimes whenever I mention uh, the UAE, um, we usually say Dubai, but in truth, we're, uh, you, the UAE is much more than Dubai. So uh, for the audience, apologies when we say Dubai, but we're usually referring to the whole of the UAE. Um, but you, you picked up on safety and I believe that uh, a lot of people still don't know much about that region and especially women are a bit anxious about them moving there and uh, are setting up their own business there. Um, I believe that uh, it is actually one of the safest places for women um, in the whole world, I would say. Uh, what, 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 do you, what do you think? Uh, I can agree with it. Uh, it's generally the safest place for living. It's political stability to uh build companies here and it's uh, space to build those super co uh companies and businesses on the ground still not uh, those international big companies entering and uh, like taking the uh the pie of the market uh, there are emerged local companies uh, building the infrastructure and executing at highest level of the service and uh, for investors and for uh, entrepreneurs, it's been a safe harbor to build those in, in very secured environment in terms of regulation and uh, stability, political stability for the businesses. And for women, I have very interesting case in uh, 2016, when I graduated from my master's in Italy, my professor moved with the company to UAE. I've been simply asking Patricia, what is behind this move? It's quite a um, uh, radical decision to move from Italy to UAE. She told like, but if you want to be in a place where the next changes will appear, it's UAE for you. And it's a place where ambitious the government will lead mega projects. And we saw the expo, we saw other like Green grand events are happening here and building a so stable, sustainable economy and having that ambitions to double that economy by 2030, uh, just making this uh, region and this country specifically very interesting. And for women to launch the business, there are lots of instruments to do it funds specifically focused on women in tech uh, you have specific uh, conditions and support from government to have it you have flexibility in terms of taxation you have also uh, infrastructure to scale your business and for women i see there are lots of opportunities now here in saudi in Qatar, in other countries, and it's emerging. It's nothing related with gender. I myself, I do feel completely secure here. And of course, uh, uh, no obstacles. And it's the landscape is changing. The business environment is changing so fast that it's really time to be here and uh, realize your potential. This is all about it. It's not about uh, is maybe it was previously but i never experienced that women was in very weak position but today is not it's completely different it's a full support and opportunities you need just to have courage to execute and uh, you know contribute your best that's it agreed so i've been trying to avoid it but i can't anymore so not, now i have to jump into my favorite topic kyc and aml not because i'm uh, against obviously checks and uh, and and and, and uh, obviously ensuring that there is no money laundering passing through our industries 
And when I say our industries, mostly we're going to talk about fintech and uh, gambling uh, because that's uh, th those are the two industries that both of us uh, work mostly in. Um, but I believe that we're missing the bush for the trees, but that's f for another discussion, I would say. <coughs> but it is definitely your main topic, AML and KYC, because you work in that industry. You service yes. a lot of fintech and uh, gambling operators. And uh, since, uh, and, and, and I believe that right now, compliance is becoming one of the most important pillars of any regulated business, I would say, not even just fintech and, uh, and, 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 uh, and gambling. Um, it has become definitely a big burden on businesses because the, the amount of compliance people they need today in order to comply is crazy. Um, but the repercussions of not complying have become even more considerable. So what are your thoughts about this? Oh, well, uh, let me explain uh, my view in a very simple way, in a more sophisticated way. When we talk with our potential clients and existing clients, I always tell that um, our platform is 50% technology and 50% is compliance, giving that uh, respect to compliance is essential part of the KYC journey and fraud prevention. And I can uh, agree with you that uh, it's recently maybe for some regulated companies it's a burden in terms of if you're not compliant if you don't follow the IML policy you will get penalties and sanctioned uh, but at the same time you have uh, opportunities in terms of cost efficiency and uh, revenue generation if you apply it since beginning or since starting such a project or uh, company and it's making the whole journey more secured. And replying in more sophisticated uh, way, it's coming to my mind how Steve Jobs in 1997 was explaining the value of the Apple, where they fit the world and what values they are bringing. And definitely in some sub, we really mean uh, safe and trusty, trust and safety, compliance, IML, security and transparency. And we stand behind those values and we deliver those values to society through providing the service. And here, yeah, of course, we concerning concern about the uh, raising fraud. We see this uh, complexity and diversity of the synthetic fraud. We see the deep fake uh, development. It's increasing tremendously day by day. There's those uh, fraud patterns you can see every day, and we should be in advance to prevent and provide more secure service. In that way, I would tell that it's not only about uh, seeing from one perspective this is burden and it has some consequences, but looking from other angle and bringing that security journey to your user and bringing that value to the uh, out there. And it's giving us uh, opportunity to uh, not only bring that expertise we have in compliance in different areas, in different regions, but also bringing best practices to prevent, to mitigate the risk for our clients in various industries. Not only in regulated, we are talking about fintech payments and finance, but also in uh, non-regulated. There is always need uh, for KYC and uh, fraud prevention solutions simply to understand uh, the possible future threats and risk and to mitigate them at early stage. As much you prepared and equipped, better you performing in long term and making your business sustainable and providing the best solution to the clients and users. This is simply we stand and we really mean it and contribute and always trying to be in advance in terms of providing uh, not only technical solution, but also expertise uh, securing the whole journey from KYC 
at an onboarding uh, stage and the whole race uh, user cycle on the platform. Agreed. Um, so you mentioned technology um, and yes, technology, um, particularly um, AI um, uh, is helping a lot in, yeah. in compliance uh, in terms of making it more efficient, more precise, and maybe could also decrease the burden on, on, on operators. So, because one of the biggest problems in terms of compliance is not actually the tools, because everyone is ready to invest in tools if they can do most of the work, but having a lot of stuff in compliance, which is very hard to find, that is where the big burden is, because nowadays it's very difficult to find stuff that is qualified um, in compliance and that is competent enough to abide by the very complex rules that there are today with uh, AML laws, implementing procedures that are very, very complex. Um, so, how do you see technology helping, in uh, uh, particularly the use of AI helping, but also um, what do you see in terms of uh, these off-the-shelf um, solutions that are available today? What, what is the distinctive feature? So if I have to choose one solution to another, and when I say off-the-shelf solution, I'm not just saying about software, it's obviously a, a, a whole service. What distinguishes between one and the other? And what should I look at when I'm choosing my solution for my, uh, for my business? Um, very good question. And it has multiple, multiple aspects to cover. Generally, all AI generated solutions allow any companies, especially financial companies we are talking about, to identify the suspicious transactions, to reduce the fraud, and to eliminate it at early stage. This is the first uh, case and scenario when companies, especially in finance, can use it. Then, of course, it's uh, reducing the manual labor, it's cost efficiency again, and uh, going further, it's approving uh, the accuracy of the compliance. This is critical for any financial institution and uh, for us, of course, for Rectech company, where the accuracy of providing services, uh, better quality, and just decreasing the risk uh, to intervent at later stage. Like more preventive your solution, more it's enhanced, it's providing you the most secure further journey because we are staying firstly at the gate of entrance of the user to the platform is KYC, but then there is a whole journey and life cycle on the platform. And we want to withdraw uh, any uh, frictions and provide that seamless, seamless uh, experience to the user. And of course, it's our duty, it's our responsibility to make it secure in terms of technology, to be compliant in different uh, jurisdictions. It's for our clients, not for end users, because it's on their shoulders to be compliant and be aware about risks in different emerging and non-emerging markets because the landscape is very very diverse it's not uh, united uh, in every single country or region so like uh, ai tools and any tech solutions that definitely allow us to read the financial crimes such as um, terrorist trafficking anti-money laundering and fraud Fraud is developing like pretty fast and we need to be enhanced. I told that we can see every day thousand different patterns of the deep fakes and uh, crime, cyber crime. And if we are behind that stream, the trend, that meaning that we are losing. But as I told previously, that value is to bring more security and trust and make it more uh, convenient for our users. In that particular way, companies can, uh, based on their need, decide what they want. 
it can be all in-house developed. It will take time and sources. It can be um, every single need can be covered by specific provider, but there is this uh, friction to sync different tools and uh, make them more engaged for their uh, whole activities. Or they can go with uh, all-in-one solution and make all the all the journey more enhanced. It's not only KYC or KYB, but the rest journey applying different uh, fraud prevention tools, trend, uh, analyzing the customer behavior and uh, uh, monitoring the all transactions. That, um, that scope of data, when you analyze it within certain period, allow you to prevent further suspicion transactions and catch the anti-money laundering activities. This is for any financial and non-financial actually companies is really really good value that's why we are standing uh, behind those pillars technology and compliance and of course uh, educating market and bringing our real life-based uh, practices best practices from all over the world to, to different clients because we are providing service not only for small and medium size, but for large uh, entities, enterprises from different industries who have expertise and practices seeing the reality, non, not only in fintech, payment, uh, crypto or blockchain, going to transportation, e-commerce, edtech, medtech even. So it's very interesting if you like dig deeper and understand what is the case of the uh, and this end user experience and why companies need to understand who is the customer. It's very interesting um, substance to explore itself, actually. But obviously, as good as the um, as good as the tools are, you still need the people to analyze the results that are generated by the tool and um, make their own assessments in order to decide whether to um, escalate the, 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 the particular uh, transaction or escalate the particular business relationship. Um, and those people are becoming more and more rare. Although more and more people are getting qualified um, in this field, uh, unfortunately, um, it's becoming more and more difficult to find these people because more and more operators and businesses are needing these people. Um, but the tools will allow, hopefully, the people that work in compliance to just focus on what is really important, I hope. Is, is that the right, uh, is that the, the, the way forward? Absolutely, because all the tools, they, as I told, allow to make accurate your uh, compliant policy and onboarding work frame. And it's additional help for any compliance officer and obviously compliance team to enhance their approach on it. Because manual reviewing or manual aspect of uh, bringing some uncertainty, bringing opportunity and chance to have a lot of mistakes and the system and AI solution and any other tech solution just making it more seamless, easy, uh, making it more secure. And uh, we always tell that all the uh, onboarding policy and responsibility to set up it properly is on the controller side, on the client side, because every single business is different and they have their own uh, business needs. And the floor and uh, the floor for specific uh, specific industry or specific uh, needs they are trying to cover can be different. And for that, we just provide the flexible platform as a Lego 
with uh, workflow builder for specific needs. And it's about you using the proper tools and solutions to admit your goals. That's it simply. Of course, there is a human element and only our uh, expertise, knowledge and creativity will lead further the development of AI or other any solution. We constantly need nourish, uh, integrate more data to make it more enhanced and more robust. That's why uh, they have their own responsibility, but there is part for uh, application of technologies and making it more smooth, more easy, and more convenient for the end user. So my take from uh, this conversation is that apart from uh, um, targeting real money laundering and uh, real um, financing of terrorism, um, uh, these tools are also important to avert fraud, which is ever increasing. Um, is that the message we're, we're trying to put forward here? It's, uh, it's about reading the fraud, definitely. It's about creating more transparent ecosystem, more secured and providing for our clients the highest conversion and pass rate, uh, the best service in terms of quality and bringing them that compliance uh, element in every single jurisdiction they are operating because it's quite vastly different landscape and you know and you have this decades experience in regulation side that is very dynamically changing substance and we need to be ready uh, every day to execute uh, based on that changes in technological way because we provide that part combining with uh, compliance definitely we have much work to do in both sides, and uh, we need to keep our eye on the most advanced technologies coming to different industries because how the AI shaping and changing uh, industries you see right now. Patti, before I let you go, um, tell me something about uh, why should people attend Sigma in Malta, Sigma and the IBC in Malta in November? Um, I know you would like to come. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It's one of the uh, rare opportunities to meet uh, your old friends, your clients in, per in person and of course make new ones to hear the best expertise and uh, like you know simply to interact with people to see what is new what is the challenges on the industries and uh, what are the best practices it's it's the best place not a part of being the leading event for the whole industry it's a unique chance to align with each, with each other and understand what we all expecting further what is there and for what we all need to prepare ourselves. Yeah, definitely I would tell see you in November and I'm really looking forward to meeting everyone there. We'll definitely see you in November and in March in Dubai for Sigma as well. So anyone who would like to meet Patti, definitely you should be coming to Sigma in Malta or in Dubai. Um, Patti, thank you very much um, uh, and uh, hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. Thank you for having me today. It's been really a pleasure. Let's keep our dialogue open and looking forward to meeting you here or in Malta. Have a nice day.